let's talk for a minute about routing and scheduling. After all the materials have been procured and what they're going to be used for is determined, managers can then consider the routing or the sequence of operations through which the products must pass. The sequence depends upon the product specifications that were developed by the engineering department of the company. Once management knows the routing, the actual work can be scheduled. Scheduling assigns the tasks to be done to departments or to specific machines, workers, or teams, including deciding what inventory goes into which, into which workstation. Many approaches have been used to schedule and different approaches to scheduling have been developed. These can range from a simple trial and error, let's try, try to make it better, whatever, to highly sophisticated computer programs. One popular method is, is, used, is called the Program Evaluation and Review Technique, or PERT. It's called a PERT chart. This identifies all the major activities and events required to complete in a project and arranges them in a sequence or path. This determines what's called the critical path where there may be bottlenecks, where multiple processes come together and there are contingencies. Based upon this, one can estimate the time required for each event and pay particular attention to the critical path to make sure that bottlenecks don't develop in the process. Here's a hypothetical example of a PERT chart for making a McDonald's Big Mac. You can see from the picture, uh, producing this Big Mac involves removing the meat, cheese, sauce, vegetables from the refrigerator, grilling the hamburger patties, assembling the ingredients, placing the completed Big Mac in its package, serving it to the customers, etc. If any of these are activities are on the critical path for production, then if that falls behind schedule, the sandwich will not be completed on time, causing customers to wait longer than they normally would. This is a very simple example, but you can see here that when you're talking about billions of hamburgers being served, even a small improvement in how this scheduling process might work, what could be done in parallel, where the contingencies are in the critical path, could improve the process and save a tremendous amount of money, even in this very simple example. In much larger examples like designing more complex products or projects like bringing in air conditions in the side of a building and building a, um, a large commercial development, for example, these kind of scheduling processes cost thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, or even hundreds of thousands of dollars if the scheduling is not done uh, up to the minute and with clear timing and discipline. So that's one of the things to consider. Taco Bell's efficient drive through operation can mirrors many major factory operations. It uses standardized procedures, it eliminates bottlenecks, the op it optimizes the staff efficiency. The restaurant actually averages 164 seconds per customer order from the time the customer arrives to departure with an assembly line of food items to construct six different types of wrappers that detail procedures on every step of the process. Taco Bell is now among the top speed, accuracy, and efficiency in these kinds of services. Employees at Taco Bell are divided into two categories, service champions, drive through and food champions, food preparations. Service champions are trained to follow a specific script as they greet customers and take orders. They enter orders into the point of sale system, make drinks when needed, and handle payments. When processing orders for more complex menu items, service champions may assist food champions in food preparation. The script goes a long way towards eliminated botched orders and but in creating an, an expectation of the customers, which is met every time they do a drive through sale. Beyond that, it comes down to teamwork, to everyone working together to create a seamless process free from mistakes. In this instance, speed and accuracy of, ser accuracy of service are as much a part of the quality from the customer's perspective as the finished food itself. In the next lecture, we'll go deeper into the idea of quality and how an organization, and in particular, the operations management organization manages quality.